I'm going to focus on rule 12, 2000, and that's about busways and splitters. We're going to talk about what is this rule about and what are the calculations. So you find this rule here in the Canadian Electrical Code, busways and splitters. You see it has one, two sub rules, and then it continues on the other page uh, up to seven sub rules. Where we find our calculations in this particular uh, section 12 rule 12 2000 is in five. So we are going to be focusing our calculation work in uh, sub subsection five, uh, which talks which helps you calculate um, the basically the the ventilation that will be allowed uh, that will be adequate adequate to um, to make sure that you uh, are not overheating inside these busways. So first, what is this rule about? So what is a busway? You can see over here, this is what a busway looks like. Uh, this is what a busway looks like as well. So you can see it in a whole system here. This one is from Siemens and this is a exploded view of Eaton. So it's an assembly of conductors in a metal trough. Um, so they're copper or aluminum conductors, of course, or, or they're, they're rigid bus bars usually. Um, they're inside this metal trough and they're supposed to be used uh, as feeders or as subfeeders. Uh, we have, we use these busways so that they allow us some flexibility to change equipment in our power distribution system. They are uh, either ventilated, these busways are either ventilated or unventilated uh, they can and the unventilated ones are called totally completely enclosed now splitters are similar to busways uh, but they have those um, uh, the the bus bars or terminal blocks are in uh, are provided with a main branch the main and branch circuit connections for in and out uh, if a splitter is so big that it exceeds um, 4,900 millimeters is actually considered a busway. So they're quite similar and they follow the same rules. Um, now we have a few subsections, but where are the calculations? The calculations are only in subsection five. Let me quickly talk about what the other subsections do. Uh, subsection uh, one, subsection one just says, it's only for exposed, sorry, uh, yes, it's only for exposed work unless you're in sub, sub rule five and seven. We love how the code's written that way. Um, sub rule two says that they should not be installed outdoors unless we mark it to be installed outdoors. Sub rule three says it should not be installed where there is mechanical damage, um, where it's going to be corroding, where there's vapors, uh, there's restricted space, there's storage rooms or batteries, etc. Sub rule, subsection, sub rule four allows the busway to be installed as risers in buildings of non-combustible construction, provided that fire stops are installed at each location where fire separation has been pierced. So that is extremely specific, sub rule four. And then sub rule five is where we found that, find the calculation. And let me just uh, let you also know that sub rule six uh, talks about a splitter with a separate screw or stud has to be installed for each uh, connection. Sub rule seven allows splitters to be installed so that they're flush with the wall covering provided they are accessible with removable covers. So those are the seven sub rules in section 12, 2000, rule 12, 2000. Let's talk about the calculation one. So there is a calculation in uh, rule 12, 2000. The objective of that cal calculation is to calculate the busway rating when the ambient temperature is between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius because above 50 is not allowed. So here's where we find um, the uh, calculation. It's in rule 12, 2005A. And 
what you have to do is all you have to do is look at that sub rule five and it's it's written kind of with a lot of words however uh what it basically tells you is that um if the ambient temperature is 40 degrees then you need to use a rating of 82 percent 45 to or sorry you have to use um a uh like a a d rating a percentage of 82 if it's 45 degrees use 71 if it's 50 degrees use 58 percent so now you have gone to two 2005 a you have got this because you're between 30 and 50 so you have this percentage now you have the bus weight rating for ambient temperature from 30 to 50 what are you going to do with it now now you're going to take your rating that you had and you're going to multiply it by this but in a decimal form so when we take a percentage and we divide by 100 we get the decimal form so what this is saying is that you have to derate your rating by this percentage by 0 0.82 0 0.71 or 0 0.58 times the rating you had before all right so um why did you have to do that just so that you understand how to do this calculation the last thing i'm going to talk about is why you had to do that well because it allows busways to be installed inside some ceiling spaces that are not accessible as long as they are derated and things don't heat up for example a false ceiling very often busways are installed in a false ceiling like a um like a, a hung ceiling um and the workspace between the busway and other any other services or structural parts have to be adequate for service maintenance and installation and the ventilation has to be adequate and that's why you derate it uh, by this amount so that you have adequate ventilation and the temperature does not exceed uh, what what is safe so the ventilation has to be adequate to prevent the ambient temperature from exceeding 30 degrees if the temperature exceeds 30 degrees the busway has to be derated by 82 71 and 58 for temperatures of 40 45 and 50 respectively busways are not to be installed in ceiling spaces where ambient temperature is higher than 50. all right so this lets you uh, remember sub rule one said you always have to mount it in an accessible place at step four if you follow sub rule five sub rule five says hey if you derate it then you can put it inside a drop ceiling which is a very common installation so i hope that has been useful for you again that was rule uh 12 2000 busways and, and splitters in the canadian electrical code so follow me Comment below, is this useful to you? Which other calculations would you like to see from the Canadian Electrical Code? I'd like to make a video about every one of them so that you can easily pass your exam. Thank you.